Hey everybody, welcome back to the Literacy Teachers YouTube channel where we're all about helping you to inspire, motivate, and change how your students read and write for academic success. In this video, we're gonna be talking about why some students see themselves as struggling readers, why some students choose to put this label on themselves. So first of all, and I think this is very interesting, even the very best readers, right? Kids that you think are just outstanding and brilliant and just so good at reading, they may not think of themselves as very good. They may actually think of themselves as struggling readers. And where does this come from, okay? So actually, let me back up for a minute. So what you can have here is a real mismatch, right? We're gonna have some kids that are really strong readers that think of themselves as struggling, we're gonna have some kids that um, legitimately would meet the definition of struggling that also see themselves as struggling. And we're gonna have some kids that might meet the definition of struggling but think they're pretty good or even outstanding. So sometimes the ways that you know we might as educators view students doesn't necessarily align with how students view themselves. But I do think this is very interesting that sometimes even the very best might think of themselves as struggling. Now, where do these definitions come from? So students really, they look around and they, they're collecting evidence from first grade, kindergarten, okay? And they're looking at what it means to be a particular type of reader, okay? So they're looking at things that their teachers have said to them about, this is what good readers do, right? This is how you engage with text. They're looking at how they stack up against their peers. They're paying attention to who amongst their peers is considered to be a good reader or a poor reader and what that means. And they are, you know, of course, paying attention to their own experiences with reading in school. And they're using all of that to put together a definition to define, you know, who they are as readers. They're obviously not always accurate with how they come up with their own definitions, but this is how they arrive at it. So they're really drawing on what they have been told about who they are as readers and you know what it means to be a particular type of readers. And as I said, right, their assessment may not be terribly accurate. Now, I wanna introduce you to Nolan. Nolan was an eighth grader, about 14 years old when I met him. We gave him an assessment and he was reading on a college level. Like he just blew the roof off of any reading assessment. Extremely bright, extremely intelligent young man, um, was reading some very complicated texts and was able to have discussions about them, okay? And um, he was also a former runner up for the state spelling bee when he was in seventh grade. This is a very bright kid. Now, Nolan told me that he was not a good reader. Now his, his assessment, like his, his um, reading scores, reading test scores were off the charts. His grades were exceptional, right? He, you know, in my mind and in his teacher's minds, there was no evidence to support this belief that Nolan was a poor reader, but Nolan decided he was a poor reader. So Nolan actually ignored assessments and grades, that sort of a thing, right? He didn't take that into account. And when he made his definition about who he was as a reader, what he explained to me was that when he read something, he read it pretty slow and he thought he read it at a much slower rate than his peers. He emphasized that he really liked to take his time when he read something and that he really took the time to ask questions about what he was reading, that he really took the time to think about the ideas being presented in the book. And because he was asking questions and really kind of, you know, thinking deeply about the ideas, that caused him to complete his readings at a slower rate. So it wasn't like he didn't understand and he was having comprehension difficulties that were slowing him down. He was just so engaged with the text that it slowed him down. And he thought that that meant he was a poor reader. Obviously he's doing what we want every kid to do, but that's not how he interpreted it. So the message that Nolan had somehow internalized was that reading quickly and finishing quickly is the hallmark of a good reader, okay? And I, I don't have any evidence, right, as to how kids get this. This is not the first time I've heard, um, you know, a kid talk about, right, I want to be able to say words fast and quick and, you know, finish, finish quick. Um, I really think that the Dibbles assessment that was given to kids when they were in their elementary years, um, when that got really popular, I really think that, you know, that assessment really shifted kids' understanding of what it means to be a good reader because that does emphasize saying words accurately and as quick as possible. This is not the first time I've seen this definition 
come up from a kid. So that's the message that Nolan got. I'm not saying that's what anybody ever told him. That's just what he internalized. Now, what can be done about this, right? What do we wanna do when we think about how kids define themselves as readers? Because we know that how they define themselves as readers can influence how they engage with instruction, how they engage with text, how they think about participating in classes. So what we wanna do as educators is we really wanna think about the messages being sent about reading, right? The language that we use around reading and what it means to be a reader. But we also wanna learn students' interpretations of these messages that they've been getting pretty much their whole lives, right? And have discussions, have conversations about it. And we wanna understand how students self-identify as readers and we wanna understand why, okay? So, right, saying for Nolan, for example, saying I'm not a good reader, okay, why do you think that? And we really need to have these deep discussions and really listen to kids so that we can sort of undo some of these messages that have been sent to them about what it means to be a particular type of reader.